We have now moving on. We have done all of the trailers for this week. And so, for the first time, we're following up the movie content with more movie content. When I've been trying to think of making movie streams in the past, I can only think of one prompt, and it bothers me for all of time. All I can think of is Pixar tier list. And other people have done it all the time, and uh, I will probably do it at some point. In fact, spoilers, I'm gonna do it today. But instead of just doing a single tier list and doing it for the whole evening, we're gonna go through five different tier lists. I've got them set up now for every kind of company, kind of generally for the animated filming industry. So we've got Pixar, we've got Sony Animation, we've got DreamWorks, we've got Illumination, everyone's favorite, and it's less animated, the MCU. They're the five kind of big companies from what I can remember. There is Disney, but I couldn't find one that was like just Disney movies. It was like, here's every TV spin-off. Here's every goofy movie sequel. And I'm like, sure, but like, whatever. So that's what we're doing this evening. We're gonna go through absolutely everything. If you have any suggestions for future movie streams, do please let me know. But with that in mind, let's begin with the very, let's see if this works. The very first selection, but hey, it's Tear Maker. It's a little zoomed in. I need to move this to the side. Hold on. Wow. And of course, we're starting with Pixar. I am very in the know of. My mom didn't know different animation companies, but she did put me on Pixar anyway, just out of pure luck. So I know every Pixar film here, I think, although I can't tell what that- oh, that's Cars. Okay, or Cars 3 maybe? Oh, maybe I haven't actually seen them all. Oh well, but uh, that's what we're going through today. So starting off, we have Brave. Brave is a film I've only seen once, but I've also watched the Easter eggs all the time, because obviously Brave is the one that has the massive Pixar theory riding on it, you know? This film doesn't really impress people. Also, I can never even remember if its name is Brave or Braveheart. Like, I'm just bad at this. It's really interesting to see the behind the scenes with like the, the <laughs> glitchy shot that she's got on the side. But other than that, Brave did not impress me. Of course it didn't. I wouldn't call it awful. Um, because it does have a nice genuine moment with, between like the mum and uh, Merida. Almost forgot her name. I appreciate her actually in Wreck-It Ralph 2. I found that enjoyable. Um, at the same time, doesn't impress me. The, the twins were fun. I don't even really remember it, so I don't think I'm gonna get anyone upset if I say it's just a bit of a meh, in all honesty. You know what I mean? I don't think we need to talk about Brave all too much more than that. Bugs Life. Now this is a movie I couldn't get behind. The actual quality of the animation is something I could, as a kid, feels a bit murky. Whereas Toy Story 1 still somewhat feels timeless, it just looks a little bit odd compared to the new Toy Stories. Bugs Life, I didn't really get into, I, I don't know, I wasn't a fan of Ants. I don't like the designs of the characters that much. The grasshopper looks too gross and the bird was too scary. So as much as, you know, it might not be a bad film, it might be well structured, I personally didn't get into it. Uh, do I want to call it bad? Do I call it worse than Brave? Am I going to be that guy? Let's make some hot takes in here. I really didn't like Bugs Life as a kid. And even now, growing up, I haven't seen it recently. But, I mean, the, the performance work from like the grasshopper and the voice acting, I think that was pretty fun, I think. And that's kind of the, the point I got from it, but my mind always thought it came out first. And I was like, it's lower quality, it's their first go, I guess. The fact that it feels like it's three, the one that's three years older doesn't really do it any, fav any favours. It's a bad life to me. Cars 3, never seen. I'm going to put it as a meh because I, I, that's the one I haven't seen. Actually, I haven't seen Cars 2 either. Cars 2 and Cars 3, I completely missed. Do we have Cars 1 in here? Yes, we do. This is Cars 1. Okay, cool. I don't know why I didn't see Cars 3. I, I laughed at the trailer because it's like, oh man, Lightning McQueen's dead. Rest in peace. And then I never watched it. I think it's because I watched Cars 1 and I was like, you know, you'll hear my, you'll hear my thoughts in a little bit. And then I thought, I'm never going to watch this again. <laughs> That's all I thought. Um, in fact, I actually remember when watching the Cars film. In fact, let's, let's go to this straight away. Cars 2, never saw. Put it in there. Cars 3, I watched in cinemas. And there were a bunch of rowdy teenagers behind me that were talking and laughing and throwing popcorn the entire time. And I was sick of them by the end of this movie. So I couldn't get into the emotional... Is there an emotional beat? The romantic drive around like the pond. Couldn't get into. The concept of Cars it didn't blow me away at most. I don't see the hype behind all of Cars. I didn't get back to it. Mostly probably because of those damn teenage kids. I was like 10 when this came out, but man, I was still irked by them. This film's okay. I'm not even gonna uh, call it good. 
I didn't, my experience of it was very okay. It wasn't good because of those damn teenagers back in the day. Ah, rabble, rabble, rabble. You're gonna die of laughter if it's lower than the second cars? Don't worry, it's not. <laughs> cars 1, at least is like, I mean, I've heard Cars 2 is terrible. Maybe I should put it in awful. I've heard everyone else say it awful. Do I want to join the crowd? Let's put it in bad because, you know, I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's bad. Am I gonna follow the crowd like that? Yes, yes I will. So up next, wow, we're just jumping years apparently. Coco, this film released in like what, 2017, 2018? Bugs Life came out in 1998. What's this, what's this ordering? I have no idea. Coco is a, a film that's actually very near and dear to my heart. I actually got to watch this film in cinemas for a start. Uh, I actually watched it as a first date with my current girlfriend. Coco, I will agree, is some top tier stuff. Pixar doing a musical and absolutely nailing the, the payoff at the end. It is so emotionally rich that for years, for 13 years, I had a favorite Pixar movie. You might be able to work it out based on that 13 years thing, if I'm correct on the years. Maybe 14 years. Either way, it was so good, this musical payoff, that I would call it perfect. It is my new, modern, favorite Pixar movie. It is just mind-blowing. Oh, I could talk about Coco all day, but no. Coco, so good. Absolutely so good. Next up is Finding Dory. Okay. Now, Finding Dory is a movie I didn't see when it came out. I waited for the longest time. I think I was also like kind of laughing, but ah, like, oh, Pixar and their sequel. Ha ha ha. I'll watch it one day. Ha ha ha. I didn't. Well, I did eventually. Um, we had to do a movie about it. We were talking about that was it. It was for the video that came out again in like November time, maybe December, of the cancelled, the cancelled Finding Nemo movie. For it, I read the whole script and I watched Finding Dory for the first time. So th there's my main connection to it. It was nice to see. I enjoyed what they did with the octopus. It, the final movie ended up better than the cancelled movie. Gotta give them credit for that. It's interesting to see like an early draft of a Pixar movie from that perspective. But I don't know if it's stuck with me. The movie does a lot of interesting things. But I don't think it blows me away. It's got a little bit of emotional beats with like meeting the parents. It's pretty great. But it doesn't really blow me away, I think, is my kind of standing there. There were a lot of fun moments, but it's not got that Pixar perfection, you know? Pixar's got a lot of standards to keep up with, you know? If DreamWorks made that movie, I'd be like, wow, that was a fantastic movie, you know? Anyway, Finding Nemo. Wow, a follow-up to Finding Dory. This is one of the Pixar classics. I've seen this movie back to front, inside and out. I really, really enjoy it. I enjoy the characters, I enjoy the plot. I enjoy the memes, I enjoy the jokes, they're not even memes, they're just mine, mine, mine. Fantastic. Is it perfect? It's really good. I wouldn't call it perfection, but like it's a classic. I'm just gonna call it awesome. Um, the same kind of reasons, I guess. Like it's just a really good classical film. I like everything about it. Everyone knows Finding Nemo. The biggest downside is Ellen DeGeneres. Moving on, The Good Dinosaur. The Good Dinosaur is impressive. The graphics? The, 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 the quality of animation, that's very good. The, the water, the lighting, the modern Pixar animation ability, very, very impressive. Good Dinosaur isn't just bad. Like, it's just like, it's not that it's incoherent, but there's nothing going on. I don't even remember a conflict. They're just walking through the fields. Good Dinosaur is the worst Pixar movie because it's just boring. I don't even remember the pl like. There's no plot. Yeah, I don't even remember it. That is an awful movie. I don't know how it how it got made. Moving on though, we have a godly series. Potentially, we have The Incredibles 2. Now this is a movie that I was hyped for. I loved The Incredibles 1 as a kid. Incredibles 2. I even made videos about it. You should have a look on them. They're quite interesting. When the film came out, I enjoyed it. It was nice to see Jack Jack having powers. Always wanted to see it. It was interesting enough to have Elastigirl and Mr. Incredible swap places. It felt a little hammed in and like it was not the most intriguing storyline to follow. You know, Violet had her story reset and then Dash had no story at all. And though I enjoyed it, it was a fun spectacle. I watched a really good video essay. <laughs> oh, a really weird tangent. But uh, it was really good about how bad the villain is and how better the story could have been. And I gotta say, I really agree. But no, with The Incredibles 2, 
considering that it had to follow up from The Incredibles set, this film does not pay off for that kind of hype. It is not a bad movie, but it really, really doesn't come close to The Incredibles 1. So you know what, I'll just put it as okay. I guess we'll talk on Incredibles now. Everything about this film I loved as a kid. I wasn't a fan of superhero movies. Didn't like Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire. I never watched it as a kid. And even now, I don't think I probably have. I've just sort of skimmed through it. Um, but this film, don't know why, just really tickled me. I wanted to be Dash. When I watched The Incredibles the first time in the cinemas, I literally ran around like crazy. I was already a hyper kid before, but I, I got worse after that. Jack Jack Attacks? Fantastic short. Really fun. Love all of the elements and how they all come together. As an adult, I watched it again. Learned all about the intricacies. Actually understood the plot line of cheating and all the themes and like things that all come together in a really satisfying way. This is another one of the Pixar classics and this was the movie that for 13, 14 years I was like this is my favorite Pixar movie. Nothing's gonna beat this ever. And then Coco came along. This is godly. I mean they are literally gods. Practically. Edna Mo calls them gods, you know? Like, oh, so good. Can we add an incredible tier, right? Ooh, here's something next. 2015's Inside Out. I didn't see this in cinemas. Again, it's the phase. I guess I was just too busy in uni. And also, I think the, the idea didn't, didn't excite me that much, you know? But still, this opens an interesting dialogue a little bit, or at least it has apparently for kids sometimes, with mental health, which is really interesting and really, like, important. Because some people, you know, some troubled kids will be, like, struggling to communicate, and they'll be, like, they can communicate through the rules of Inside Out. I really like the creativity in the world, how there's different islands for different personality traits, you know? It didn't blow me away, but I can acknowledge why it's good. Like, I liked the, whatever his name is, Bingo Bongo. I don't know, Boingo? Boingy? The elephant. That was a good moment when he disappears. The The way they play with the logic of the world is really, really interesting. And like the end uh, conclusion about how a little bit of sadness is good was really good. I think my favorite bit really is the epilogue when you see all the other brains. Like when you see the teenage boy just freaking out over girl, girl, girl. That's like my best bit. Bing bong, excuse me. <laughs> Not bingo boingo. That's, that's hoodwinked, I think. Oh, well, you get the idea. Like that was really good. I enjoy it. I can acknowledge that it's pretty good, but it doesn't it doesn't have like the blow me away factor that others do. Um, also in my logic, this is like better than this. You know, it scales that way, I guess. Yeah, you're worse than cars, sure. Um, better than Brave though? Yeah, sure, it's enjoyable. Um, so yeah, Inside Out, it's pretty great. I'll give it that. But it, I didn't get into the hype as much as everyone else, you know? Hey, look at that. Another mm, Pixar classic. Monsters, Inc. Again, I know this movie back to front with sounds. It's just, oh, so nostalgic and good. Great watching it back and seeing all the elements come together. I think it's just a really solid Pixar movie. Yeah, oddly enough, I feel like I forgot about it for a while, you know? Like, it's a classic, but it's kind of an underrated classic, and I can't explain why. Like, it's definitely in the perfect awesome tier. Then there was Monsters University. Now, this I did watch in cinemas. It was early enough. It was like, what, 20... 10? No, that's Toy Story 3. 2011? 2013? 2013, 2013, I think, was Monsters University. So yeah, just a bit before I went to university, but not quite. This movie I enjoyed, I think. I don't really get into the uh, the fanfare running around racing element. The actual frat parties? Not really. You know, I wasn't blown away by like how lame the characters were either. Like the, the Uzma... I don't remember the second name, but that, that group also didn't attach me too much. But what I really, really like, like really do, is that final act when they end up in the human world and they have a real heart to heart and have to scare real adults in the human world. I think that is like the best scene in the series. Good storytelling. I think that's the antithesis that the series will go because like also like the graphics, the quality, the cinematography, and the payoff of it all is just so, so good. Like, I can't even quantify how much I love that final act. But to watch it, you have to watch an hour and 20 minutes of the rest first. And that, that just doesn't get me, you know? Like, 
I'm so glad they like added it on to the end because I really thought it was going to end, you know, with them succeeding the tournament. And the fact that it just keeps going is so good because that extra le next bit is so good. But the rest of it, yeah. So for that final act, you know, I'd put it full on like here. But with the rest of it, it's good. Mostly because of that last act, really bringing it up, you know. Right, moving on, onward. This is a movie um, that didn't impress me, I've got to admit. The direction it took, I don't think I liked it any point apart from the last five minutes. And even then, doesn't blow me away. The fact that it was Chris Pratt and Tom Holland already irked me a little the wrong way. Pixar movies do have a lot of celebrities in them, and they do have them in main casting roles. But something about having these two super trendy dudes, super already connected, playing typecasts of themselves, really didn't do it any favor. Maybe, maybe it's because there's two of them. But the fact that it was so kind of generically done, the world was interesting, but not mind-blowingly interesting enough, you know? Something about all that fell a little flat out. You know, the fact that they got a magical staff and he slowly gets better. That's not a surprise. That's not cool, you know? The, I was surprised when the van ended up galloping in its final moments. That was a cool little moment. Um, the real highlight, really, is the final five minutes. The revelation that, to see the dad, it's not really about our main protagonist, because he's already had his father figure in his brother. His brother's the one that needs to see it after having a traumatic hospital experience as his final memories with his dad. That was good. But it's like a worse version of the Monsters Inc. thing. Monsters Inc. has a whole final act that brings up everything, establishes it later. Like it has this major, more upbringing and like payoff for it. It all comes together, all sorts of elements. It's elongated and it just keeps going. For Onward, while I appreciate they didn't show the dad and it was more important to just have the concept of the conversation than the actual conversation, it was smaller scale, it was last minute, and it's just a revelation more than anything else, you know? For me, and this might be a little bit of an, an oddball one for everyone else, but I would call it just okay. In fact, maybe no, I wouldn't. I'll call it meh. Let's call it there. If not worse. Like, honestly... Bugs Life maybe should be lower than that. I, I can't tell. It's kind of merging over here, but oh well. Ratatouille. Ah. Ratatouille, I watched when it came out in 2007. I wasn't impressed by it. I'll be honest, uh, I didn't like it much, you know. Um, I now know it's really good. People say it's good. I remember, like, the pinky comment or, like, a, a, a pencil. Bon Voyage is out on the street. You see Doug the dog as a silhouette. But um, everything else... I just didn't get into it. I was like, this is a nice film. Right, I never want to see it again. And I never did. But I acknowledge that it's good. I acknowledge that people enjoy it. Um, I don't really have much else to say because it's been 14 years since I saw it. God, I am old. So the quickest one so far, better than Monsters University. Uh, not better than Finding Dory. Finding Dory has a lot of things that pay off on it. Uh, two is just good in its own way. It's a great film. Let's not... Let's not dig into it any further than that. Don't need to overthink it. Moving on. Ooh, we have Soul. We talked about this recently, just in December. Um, it was my big final 2020 video, essentially. This movie, I was really conflicted when it came out because it was, you know, an African-American story that five minutes in turns him into a blob. And I was like, man, that's not the best representation. I hope they do more with it. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that he does end up in the real world more. That's the intriguing element, you know? As much as the 2D animated characters are cool, I, you know, I want to see some reality, the high quality, the, the African-American kind of story, the jazz. And it does that. The fact that it turns into a body swap story was a little uh, cliche. I wasn't entirely on board, but I like what they ended up doing with it. it they pay it off as best as they can with the, with the circumstances. But... As you've probably seen from the video, I won't dig onto it too much because you can hear a whole 20 minute ramble about it. The final act didn't bring me together. Um, I don't know entirely why. I think it is, again, it's just, uh, I guess it's they have a revelation that recontextualizes the entire film. But it's not that big of a revelation, you know? When people say, ah, oh, what's the meaning of life? People say, ah, oh, it's to live it, you know? That's like the most basic way to respond. I like the messaging at the end, 
But I wish it was anything else, because I wanted to be surprised. You know, it's like there aren't many films that talk about the existentialism of life and where to, what to do with your life. The one that does this film goes with the one conclusion that everyone says. I really wanted something more of it. This film probably does a lot of good for a lot of people. I love the animation from the 2D side and the high quality 3D graphics. I keep talking like it's a video game, but the ending really doesn't dig me to get back into it. I don't I will probably rewatch Monsters University one day for that final act, if at least not on YouTube. I won't do the same for Soul, you know? Cars was a nice all-rounder movie. Is it better though? No. I'm gonna say it's it's good. Not great. Anyway, moving on. Ooh, we're finally getting to them. These are all classics. Toy Story 4, the first major, major film that set me off on the movie path. Made The Incredibles 2 videos, like in 2018. They did really good. Then a year later, 2019, 2019, July, I moved into this place. I made the video in my old place and then moved. And in that time, I had no internet for three days. Opened it up in three days and saw my views. I was like, whoa. That's like 150,000 views in four, three days. That's crazy. And then I was like, right, movie stuff is the way to go forwards. And so I did. Toy Story 4, I really came into it with low hopes, you know? I think everyone did. It was such a uh, rip-off, just grabbing more content as much as they could. But actually, I thought they really paid off where the story was going. It was an interesting extra story to tell of a toy outgrowing their human and where they go next. And I honestly really, really enjoyed it. I think this this film was way better than it needed to be. Is it my favorite Toy Story? Gosh, that's hard to tell, man. You know? Um, I would say better than Monsters, Inc. It's pretty perfect, in all honesty. I have a softer spot for The Incredibles, but the fact that it, it rose from the very bottom tier of, oh, this is a cash grab, to, oh my god, I'm emotional is astonishing. That is such a high, steep hill that it went up, you know? That, like, I can't even fathom it. I can't tell if it's my personal favourite. I think nostalgia's getting in the way for a, one of the other ones coming in. And Toy Story 3 is also really good and rounded. But Toy Story 4 I watched twice. And I don't cry watching films, but I shed a single tear. That's all I could... That's all I could... I couldn't fight it. I was trying to fight it in the cinemas, because again, I was with my girlfriend again. She was on that side and she she spotted me shed a single tear and I was like, I'm not crying. The fact that I was like, this is a cash grab and it turned to a tear literally rolling on my face for the only time I've allowed it to happen means it has to be a perfect film. It was just so good. I just, oh, so good. Right, let's get our final ones done. Toy Story 3. This is a movie I only saw twice. I saw it when it came out in cinemas in 2010 and I watched it recently, potentially for a video. I don't know why I watched it. It might be on, just on in the background or something. Again, I was very surprised by it. It's so emotional it 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 drives hard and it actually all the middle parts are really cool the way it all comes together you know less invested in the toys that are already at the girls place they then blow me away but the way it all comes together seeing a new element of the toys with the uh what do you call that nursery uh, kindergarten really good really comes around really gracefully but i think again final act just blows it out of the way you know that again one of those top five scenes coco's singing to his grandma um does incredibles have that kind of moment where's my super suit i guess um monsters inc in monsters university at the lake and now toy story ending oh not in that order perfect film better than toy story 4 i'd call it that because um, like i i didn't i wasn't in time for the university hype i you know in 2010 I was well and truly into school. I didn't move to university till 20, 2015. But even still, oh, my heart. I had that existential dread of, oh man, am I treating my toys badly? Yes, because I didn't keep any of them. I had a Pikachu backpack and then I binned it one day. Didn't get the happy ending in the end. As for Toy Story 2, this was my personal favorite as a kid. Toy Story 1, I watched a bunch, but Toy Story 2, I watched back and forth. Again, got a nice emotional beat halfway through there with Jesse's backstory. It didn't need to go that hard on the music, but they did. They really did. You know, again, seeing a whole element of toy collections. That was really fun and interesting. I remember repeating on VHS the blubbering of um, our guy, Al, being like, where's the remote? How am I supposed to do it? Oh, there it is. Like that, that kind of 
put that up against the, put that audio against him saying it in the movie. I hope my time, if I'm, if my memory's correct, the timing of that should be like in sync, or at least the oh there it is is like the same kind of intonation. I really like how it all comes together. Again, like I I was a really big fan of that movie. It's another perfect. Is it better than Toy Story Four? No, no. I'll put Toy Story in its own little band, little down there. And then there's Toy Story 1. Again, I know the sound back and forth. It came out when I was, you know, a fetus, if not less. Uh, 995, see, I was minus one. I only now recently realize how low the quality of animation is, considering it was literally their first. It's solid. But I kind of think along the way, everything that they've done after that with Toy Story has gone ahead of it, which is a good, massive compliment, I would say. This is just a nice character study with toys about, you know, being the top dog and then being jealous of the new guy and then coming around about it, you know? It all just comes together really, really nicely. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, again, I would call it uh, perfect. Is it better than Monsters, Inc.? Yes. Yeah, I say Toy Story is just on another level. Toy Story I've always underrated because when I think of Pixar movies, I think of The Incredibles and Monsters, Inc. Finding Nemo, you know? And, uh, sure, the other ones. But Toy Story I always forgot about for the longest time, but they are so solid. If they made a Toy Story 5, it would be another perfect, probably. Or it would really be a cash grab and get down into bad, but like, ugh. And then there's Up. Not having the best last act, but having the best opening act. It's solid. And I really like the soundtrack. Like, the adventure is out there. It's really good. I just like the music is so nice and wholesome that like it is really, really good. That being said, I don't remember much afterwards. They go on an adventure. You know, I'm not crazy about the talking dog, Doug. Not crazy about the meat, meat bird from Looney Tunes. The ending's nice, though, from what I can remember. But it doesn't draw me in crazy amount from what I can remember. That being said, I would probably put it better than Inside Out, but not better than Finding Nemo. It's pretty great. The opening brings it up. The rest... Pitter patters down. It's not bad on that front, but you know what I mean? So for our final one, we have talked about it before. Wally! -E. Now this is a movie that we've done another video. Another video on. You know what we called that series that it was featured in? It wasn't very successful, must admit, even if it is an animation. It was not a very successful series. This was plastered as perfect. The fact that it is so visually storytelling, the way that it all comes about. This film just Oh, I don't think I fully appreciated it as a kid, but I knew I still loved it a lot as a kid. I can't even tell you where it's supposed to go in here, in all honesty. I'm going to put it above every Toy Story, but below The Incredibles. Wally -E is so good. I can't even quantify, you know? But yeah, I would definitely, if you don't, if you're not aware of it, watch Wally. -E. Coco, I would recommend to everybody. Incredibles, I'd recommend to everybody. And Wally. -E. Absolutely my top three. That, I, I should have, I am surprised I didn't know that, but that's absolutely true. Pixar is truly a magical animation company. And though they've had less big hitters in recent years with Onward and Soul, in my opinion, I have no doubt they are going to go on to do great things. Because this, like, seven perfect movies? That's fantastic, you know? Look how little bad and awfuls there are. It's so scaled in one direction that I don't think I would contest with this list. I I adore Pixar from the bottom of my heart, and it's just, oh, my heart is just happy with nostalgia about it, you know? So, so good. I really enjoy it in every form of the word.